Do we have a dominant eye? Is it critical to sports performance? We'll look at those issues in this video. In this video, we'll review the facts, look at the science, and we'll stay away from the hype regarding the dominant eye and how dominant eye testing and how it might, probably not, improve your visual and your sporting performance. Hello, I'm Dr. Labby, with 30 years experience working professional and elite athletes in sports vision. What I want to do here is bring to you what I've learned from those athletes, working with them to improve and maximize your sports performance. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into ocular dominance, how to test it, and how it might be important for you in your sports performance. The idea of a possible dominant eye was first described about 500 years ago and kind of made sense at that point because people were used to having a dominant left hand or a dominant right hand. They thought since there was a left eye and a right eye, there must be a dominant eye as well. Although the idea of a dominant hand is pretty obvious because we can do things with each hand separately, the idea of a dominant eye takes a little bit more evaluation. If you think about it, having a dominant left or right hand makes sense. We do things with each hand separately. One hand may be holding something, the other one might be writing something. That's pretty intuitive and pretty common. But when we talk about the eyes, things are a bit different. We're actually used to using both eyes together at the same time. We can't use each eye separately. And in fact, if you do use each eye separately, if one eye is pointed in one direction and the other eye is pointed in a different direction, that's probably a reason to go to the eye specialist to see what's happening. In addition, using our eyes together gives us ideal and perfect stereoscopic depth perception. If we only have one eye, we're seeing not normally. We're seeing less depth perception than we can. And we've already spoken about in other videos the importance of 3D vision and stereo vision in sports performance. So in summary, we're, we're used to using each hand separately, left and right hand separately. We may be holding a, a, a phone or a book and we may be writing something with our other hand, but we're not used to using the eyes separately. In fact, not only the eyes could be separated in direction, but if that's the case, you're not gonna have the depth perceptions I mentioned, but you also might have double vision. And I don't think playing sports with double vision is gonna be very productive. Thus, it seems like to talk about a dominant eye might not be quite the same thing as talking about a dominant hand. So with that being the case, let's take a look at the different tests that are out there for eye dominance. So I'm not gonna go through them all because there's probably around 40 or 50 different tests. But in general, we can divide them into two groups. We divide them into the groups such that one set of tests forces a answer that is either right or left eye. There's nothing in between, it's either left or right. The second set of tests allow for what we call intermediate forms of dominance where you might have left, you might have right, but you could also have any point in between from in fact not being dominant, having no preference for the right or the left eye. Now, if you think about it, it's not surprising if you use a test that only can give an answer of left or right, that you're gonna get an answer of left or right, even if somebody's using both eyes together. In fact, many of those tests rely on your hands. There's one famous one that's called the hole in the card test where you hold your hand up and, and look through the hole at a target. Well, you can imagine if, if your shoulder is stiff or if your arm hurts, you may be drifted one side or the other, forcing you to choose a left or right eye to look through, which in fact is not truly your dominant eye. In fact, you are forced to choose left or right, and because of other reasons, you chose the eye, not because of an eye reason. That doesn't sound like a very good way to test for dominant eye. On the other hand, if you are measuring, let's say, the temperature in water, you wouldn't want a thermometer that says just hot or cold. You'd want a thermometer that gives you gradations, degrees between zero and you know, freezing, let's say, and all the way up to 100, that would give you a measure of exactly what the temperature of the water is. Well, that's what the tests that measure, that allow the use of both eyes to do together do in Domino's testing. That's the kind of test that seems to make more sense. Instead of forcing a hot or cold answer, you actually get a number of exactly how hot or how cold it is, and then it allows you to make a decision whether the water is for you too hot or too cold, which might be different for somebody else. In fact, in a 2015 study coming out of Sweden, researchers compared these two kinds of tests, the ones that test only give an answer of only right or left, and ones that give intermediate answers. And what they found is you'd expect no connection between the two. Many of the people that were left-handed were either right or partially right or partially left, or some were even fully left. There was no connection between the results of the two tests. In fact, when you give people in that study the ability to choose left or right with all the variations in between, in that study, 28% of the people showed no dominance. They were right in the middle. They didn't have a left or right preference. Whereas if you gave them the test that forced a left or right, they gave you a different answer. Similar results in another study out of the Mayo Clinic, looking at the different tests. And what they found that the all the tests show pretty good test retest reliability. In other words, 
when you used it once and used it a second time, you got the same answer as the first time. And that's good. That's an important piece of a test. But again, when you compared the results between the two different types of tests, there was no real connection between them. In another study out of Canada, they showed that depending on how far away you made the test, you got a different answer as well. Well, that seems to be a problem. If you have different tests and different distances all giving different answers, is that a problem with the test? Is that potentially a problem with the actual function? This doesn't make sense because if you're testing something, you better get the same answer with every test you have every time you do that test on the same person. Otherwise, something's wrong in this picture. In fact, it was that observation that led us to our recent paper about ocular dominance and the idea whether it's actually dominance or maybe it's just a preference. In that paper, we reviewed the history of eye dominance, as we mentioned 500 years ago. We looked at the physiology and the mechanism of how eye dominance may or may not work. And we explored several different fallacies that people push forward, supporting the argument for a pure left or pure right dominance and the use of those very specific one eye only test results. Unfortunately, despite the scientific literature and the many papers about eye dominance and the problems with testing of eye dominance, and even the possibility that eye dominance doesn't exist, still the idea of eye dominance is very pervasive in sports, is pushed forward almost daily by sports trainers and eye care professionals as being an important thing to test in sports performance. Here are a couple of small clips from channels that describe dominance testing and the role in sports. You can see by the enthusiasm that this is something that's firmly believed in, and I think it's gonna be hard to be let go. We're gonna work on trying to figure out what your dominant eye is, okay? And to find the dominant eye, you have to actually uh, try something. I don't know if you've done this before, maybe you have, but it's really helped me, and I'll explain later why I, sh I have a hard time tracking the ball on my forehand side versus my backhand. Oh. So the eye dominance test. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you how to test eye dominance so that you can tell if you're left eye dominant or right eye dominant. So knowing eye dominance can be a really important thing to know. I know for myself being an eye doctor, I need to know the eye dominance of my patients. So where does that leave us? What do we do? So in summary, we have this concept of eye dominance that seems to match hand dominance, although hand dominance kind of makes sense where eye dominance doesn't because having a dominant eye or dominant uh, left or right eye will affect visual function abnormally and you won't have the benefit of both eyes working together equally. We have tests that test for eye dominance, but the tests agree with themselves, but they don't agree with other tests for eye dominance. That's a problem. And we see that and any one test, if you test it a little bit differently, different distances, you get a different result of eye dominance as well. Well, all those things come together to become a real problem. On top of that, we published a paper several years ago looking at, for example, in baseball batting performance of batters at the major league level, looking at their ability to, in batting average, slugging percentage, and on base percentage, having same or crossed hand-eye dominance. That means a right-handed batter with right eye that was measured as being dominant for same, and a right-handed batter with a left eye being dominant for crossed hand-eye dominance. What we found was whether they were the same or crossed, it made no difference in their batting performance. Now that being said, in sports like baseball and tennis and so forth, where both eyes are important to be used together, eye dominance probably isn't something that's important, relevant, or frankly should be measured or even discussed. There are those certain sports where a dominant eye could be important. For example, in shooting and archery, where one eye is looking at the target alone, that becomes a critical issue. And there needs to be a determination of which eye was gonna be best to be used to line up the site or the target. Well, that was a long one, but thanks for staying tuned. What we're looking at here is the importance of eye dominance and exploring how it's best to use both eyes together as we discussed in the depth perception videos in our channel. And the importance of using both eyes together to gain maximum information for your sport. It's important to understand the visual requirements for each sport, what needs to be tested, what needs to be optimized, and how you can use those tools in that toolbox for maximal sports performance. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel below so you can be notified every time we have a new video coming out to help you perform at your best.